my name is Hannes Thor Haldorsson. I am an uh, I am an Icelandic uh, director. I am the director, writer, and editor of the movie Cock Secret. Um, for a long time, I have lived this strange double life of being a football player and a, and a filmmaker. And I made this movie during my second last season as a football player while still being the national team goalkeeper of Iceland. We somehow managed to make this movie, and I'm happy to be talking about it with you. Awesome. And uh, I'm Daniel. And so what, what's speaking of that, what's it like uh, balancing those filmmaker and goalkeeper? It's it's not easy. Um, it's two fun jobs, but it's, um, you know, especially if you are, are, are playing at a decent level and also if you're starting to, to make feature movies, they they start to clash a lot. Um, I was able to, to work as a filmmaker for a long time with football, but during that time I was climbing the ladder uh, on, in both areas, uh, both as a football player and as a filmmaker, and I was... I was only working as a commercial director and what that does is it allows you to you know do the pre-production and the post-production around the football schedule and then there's maybe one day maximum two days of shooting and you can try to place them when you have a day off from you know football trainings or maybe a day when you have a light practice and you can speak to your coach or something like that so it was a constant puzzle and there was a huge challenge when I decided to go for the feature movie while still being a football player. And the reason was we got this opportunity to do it. I had this comedy group, um, which is very popular in Iceland. We had this idea and there was a possibility to go for it because the Icelandic movie um, fund, they had, they had, yeah, they had an opening for us to, to get, to get some, funding for the movie and only for that year so we decided to go for it it's going to be super tough but let's make it work and that's also why the, the producers and everybody when they were going crazy when we were actually filming the movie around my training schedule because we did it in the middle of the season and they were you know it was driving them crazy they all knew what they were getting into so it was every time there was a it was a hard you know moment they were like yeah we knew we can't complain we, we knew what we were getting into so just go go and train so so that was kind of everybody was everybody knew that this was part of the the deal and it was tough on everybody but we managed to work around it somehow okay that's really really impressive that's awesome uh i don't i'd love to ask um just are there any disciplines that you learn from being an athlete or skills that are transferable to filmmaking and vice versa? Yeah, I think there are some. Um, the, these are two quite different jobs. Um, if, you, if you look at just the job, you know, but uh, mentally in many ways it's it's similar, you know, uh, you need to, in both areas, you need to prepare yourself for the unknown you don't know what's going to happen when you go into when you go into the working day uh, if, if it's a game or if it's a shooting day you, you can prepare yourself as good as you can and and then that you just dive into the unknown and you hope for the best that's a little bit how it is and, um, and you're always you have the, the same kind of relief after a good game or after a good shooting day i think when you when everything falls into place when everything works out or if you win the game or you didn't make a mistake it's a similar feeling, and and both in both areas you need to have people skills. You need to you need to be able to um, deliver under pressure, even though you're stressed or you have lots of things coming at you. You you need to keep calm. So I think I think both areas help me. I'm coming now into filmmaking and making my first feature film. It's super hard, but having been the national team goalkeeper for Iceland for ten years, which is which is you know, enormous pressure. I think it gives me some kind of confidence needed, you know, which makes up for my lack of experience because I can, there's some, something about the experience that I've had that helps me dealing with situations on the other side. So lots of things are connected, I think. Okay. And also just with the, 
the story kind of centering around Iceland's women, Iceland's women's team qualifying, mm-hmm. for, trying to qualify the world for the World Cup. Did that come naturally, or how did that come about for the story? It came about um, uh, ten years before we were we were writing this movie, and um, and what we wanted to do was create as big as an event. As, as, how do you say that in English? As big of an event as possible. And um, the biggest event we could we could think of was Iceland playing England uh, at our home stadium because at that moment we had never faced England. And we were always, you know, every time they, they, they made the draw, we were like crossing our fingers to get England because everybody in England, England in Iceland is following the English league and have their team root, rooting for a team in England and all that. So we were hoping for England every time. And we knew if we finally get England, the things are going to be upside down. You know, there, there's not going to be anyone on the street. It's going to be like a frenzy for a week. So we chose that as our setting. Okay, Iceland is playing England at, at our home ground. That's gonna be that's like the biggest thing we could think of. And then things developed, and ten years passed, and you know things uh, things changed uh, in society. And we felt also that we had a movie which was a little bit too macho, and we wanted to find ways to to um, you know to uh, just uh, send out better signals and we've and the Icelandic national team the women's national team is super popular in Iceland and they have been doing fantastically in the last in the last uh, couple of years and the captain of the of the team is probably the most I, w- I would say the most popular athlete in Iceland at the moment she is the one who, who walks out on the field and all that in the movie so we just felt like this is the perfect opportunity to to, to balance the the, the gender, um, how do you say? It? Can you help me with the English? The gender, like uh, balance oh, a little bit. Yeah, quality. Yeah, uh, quality, and we just felt it was right for the movie. You know, we we, we decided to keep the 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 scenario. You know, Iceland, England. Also, having played against England in the Euros a few years before, uh, it wasn't uh, as huge of an event. As it as it is what it was when we thought about it ten years before, so we just felt it was more exciting to have it, to have the women's team uh, being the center of the of the climax. Okay, awesome. What's it like, kind of balancing that those ma- the macho cops with the the relationship you create here, which with uh, Bossy and uh, Hodor? Um, I mean, it was it was lots of fun. And if it, everything about it was fun, I think. You know, writing the characters, we had we had tons of fun. It was me and uh, the two actors who played those two guys. We wrote the story for the movie ten years ago. So all the one-liners between them, everything, you know, the chemistry that you see between them is something. It comes from their friendship. It comes from their kind of um, knowledge of of action movies and one-liners and 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 they are. They are also experienced comedians, so they were able to, you know, I think light their characters on, you know, on or give them spark and life. Uh, and then filming, filming the movie, filming with these two guys, having and uh, seeing them come to light and uh, their relationship, um, yeah, w- becoming, you know, something something tangible. Was was amazing, and uh, after all this time, to seeing it, to seeing it come to life was a really satisfying experience. And they, I think they were just they're good actors, also. They are comedians, well-known comedians in Iceland, and you, you don't know what you're gonna get. Okay, they can play in comedy sketches, and um, but you know, a movie needs to be a movie. It needs to be something you believe and and something you get get sucked into. And and that was something that I was unsure of of how. We would succeed with uh, if, if the, those two guys would carry a movie and make us kind of like the characters and i think they did a really good job on that yeah have, have you guys gotten any feedback from like north america yet or anything just if like for me i wouldn't have known like these actors like have you gotten any feedback with like how it's played in north america yet no, we haven't 
no, not that much. Uh, the, the response from critics has been fantastic. Um, I'm not sure how much of them are from North America. Some are, but um, yeah, we've been getting almost uh, only positive reviews, and that's been really satisfying because we are we we were making a movie that we we to be honest we never thought anyone outside of Iceland would ever see it. It was just supposed to be a local action comedy. Uh, but we, we did it with love and passion. And I think that maybe tra you know, tra transcends in the movie and uh, people relate to something that's done with passion. And even though there are some local jokes that peop uh, people outside of Iceland are not going to get, uh, it looks like we, we put enough into the movie that, um, that you know, it, it can travel. What are some of the local jokes that you put in? Um, lots of them. I mean, there's no, for example, the, uh, maybe that's obvious, but there's no jurisdictions in Iceland and the two towns that are like the rival towns, they are like, it's the same town. They are, they're li lying next to each other. And um, it, it, we are exaggerating a lot this uh, Gardapair being this fancy, uh, you know, uh, this this fancy snobbish town and Reykjavik being, uh, you know, a, a little bit more, a little bit more um, shabby, uh, and those two those two towns being in, in a big having a big rivalry is uh, is funny to Icelanders. Um, we have all sorts of of known uh, characters playing themselves. You know, uh, the the radio. Jockey is what you say, radio yeah. jockey. Yeah, he's playing himself. He is a very well known um, radio personality from the 90s, and he has all these kind of catchphrases from the 90s. And Ricky, the, the villain, uses one of his catchphrases right before he he uh, <laughs> blows his head off. I don't know if I'm supposed to say that, uh, if I'm if I'm giving away spoilers, but he 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 twists one of his one of his radio actual radio phrases and. Another thing you have this, um, the may no the um, prime minister in the movie. Uh, his name is Jon Knar, and he is playing himself. Um, but the yeah. interesting thing is, uh, maybe five years ago, or longer ten, he he became the mayor of Reykjavik in a crazy election. Uh, back then, it was uh, it was it made the world news and was really. Uh, something special, but now with uh, Ukrainian, the Ukrainian president, maybe it's not so uh, such big news anymore to have an actor being the the leader of a nation or of a of a town. But he was like our most our, our most famous comedian, and he became the mayor of Reykjavik. And he was the mayor for four years, and it was quite crazy. And he just said all sorts of uh, crazy things, and it was okay. interesting four years. Um, but in this world, he has you know he has um, taken the next step and, and has become the prime minister of the country. So that's like a side reality, which is like connected to the real world, but still not. And so we have all, all sorts of small things all over the, all over the movie. Okay, fine. All right. And with the villain of Ricky, what was it like creating him? And I'd love to ask just in general of him always speaking English, what inspired that? Um, I think I think we all had a lot of fun creating him. Uh, Piotr Linder, the the actor playing him, is probably the most uh, is the most established actor of the whole gang. He and maybe uh, Stein and Olina, who plays the um, chief of police, those two are like they are real actors, you know, <laughs> and they have okay. they have done lots of things, and he is very experienced. So so it was fun to work with him. Seeing him take this character, who is who is you know very uh, colorful, and um, we, we it took us a while to find him though. He was playing around with all sorts of costumes, all sorts of uh, um, styles, and uh, different directions. And when this idea came up, what if he what if he had him speak English? And it was like, why should he do that? I don't know, but. Let's just make him do it, uh, and then we found this. We, we made this backstory for him that he he was Icelandic or is Icelandic and moved away from Iceland a long time ago, and he just prefers to speak English, which we just found funny and uh, silly. 
Um, but we also like the opportunity of having English in the movie, you know, because a lot of things sound more cool in English than it does in Icelandic. So having the villain speak, speaking English, mixing it with Icelandic and people not knowing if they should answer him back or not, I think it was just a good balance of having some cool things in the movie, having some funny things and making him a bit more memorable and interesting. Okay, awesome. I think that was my time. So really excited for people to watch Cop Secret. And I'd like to thank you, Hannes, uh, for chatting with me on the Film Crazy Show. Thank you. It was fun speaking to you. Awesome.